Hello, everyone. Um, I am Firus Khan, and today I'm back with a brand new class. So, if you haven't liked our page, our Facebook page, just type in Firus Education Services and like our page. We have plenty of videos um, on our page. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, again, just type in Firus Education Services and subscribe to our channel because we have around 60 videos and all our videos are synchronized in the playlist. It's very convenient and easy to find. Let's wait for some students to join. Um, we have designed a very interesting lesson for you. Today, it's going to be a short class and, and we will finish it very soon. So. Um, the picture that you can see, um, it's, it's, it's body cosmetics. It's cosmetics, actually, and from a very, very renowned brand, uh, which is known as The Body Shop. The Body Shop is an English brand, is a British brand, if I'm not mistaken. And the name of the founder is Anita Roddick, right? So these cosmetics that you, that you can see on my screen are, are from Body Shop, and it's a very old brand. Now, when Body Shop came in, there was a lot of talk about it. It grabbed a lot of attention. It caught a lot of media attention. Now, of course, um, it's a good product. Um, uh, you know, the packaging is nice. Everything is nice. But, but why did they get a lot of attention? Now, they got a lot of media attention. Uh, they drew a lot of attention because, first of all, they made organic products, okay? Uh, made products that are organically sourced. They had their own farms. They had, uh, you know, tie up with forests in Africa and they produced really good organic products, which was unseen and unheard of before this, right? Uh, and it was way back, way back in 90s or, or early 2000s where nobody heard of organic products. They were the first one, okay? And then they were thoroughly against animal, no animal testing. Uh, I'm sorry, I've mistake. There's a mistake. So they didn't test their products on animals. Now, usually what happens, cosmetic brand, they test the products on animals just to see if it's okay. Does it have skin allergy or not? How is it reacting? So Body Shop is totally against animal testing or animal products or using animal ingredients. And, and this was one of the first brand that took this kind of initiative. They used organic products. They used animal products. Okay. And this kind of business who is socially responsible uh, is known as ethical businesses, right? Environmental friendly businesses, green businesses, that care about the environment, that ca care about humans and animals and other social issues that are important um, in, in, in our world today, right? But, uh, you know, what are the benefits of environmental friendly businesses? Let's have a look. So the first benefit is that you can use this as a real marketing and promotional advantage. Now, if you buy a body shop lotion or a face wash or a soap, uh, on the cover, on the top, clearly, um, uh, big and bold, it is written that no animal testing, 100% organic products. So you can use this as a real marketing and promotional tool, right? Um, and, and, uh, and, and this can have an advantage because nowadays in 2020 and the years to come, people are very aware of the environment right? People like to eat organic products, use organic products, they're against animal testing, and they're against other social issues. So you will definitely, definitely, uh, you know, be targeting at a, at a good number of audience uh, now. Um, so uh, that's the first benefit. You will have a real marketing and promotional advantage, and you can use that to market your products, advertise your product, okay? And um, uh, what will happen is when you're when you're an ethical business, when you follow rules, when you're an ethical business, when you are so aware environmentally and socially, there is a less number, very less number of chance breaking the laws because you you know you think about animals, you think about uh, you know how to produce properly or how to carry out business pro operations without harming others. So in that way, you're reducing the risk. Um, of, of breaking laws. 
uh, and 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 therefore you will avoid bad bad publicity or heavy court fines or you will avoid cases okay so in that way you're safe um uh, number three is people takes a lot of pride so people working in a company will be very proud will be motivated and moreover on top of that you will have better applications you will have better employees working for your company okay so it's quite interesting so three three possible advantages first advantage is that it'll have real marketing and promotional advantage right uh, you can use that to promote your product to advertise a product to market your product okay uh, number two you will avoid breaking laws. You will avoid heavy court fines. You will avoid uh, very, uh, you know, high potential uh, court cases. Number three, uh, your employees and other people around you will be motivated, and therefore you can also attract very good employees. So that's number three, right? Uh, let's go ahead. Um, and and uh, you know when you use when you use solar panels or when you use electric cars, you're also minimizing the cost. Now, what is it? Let me tell you. For example, let's say you decided not to use, you know, normal electricity. So what you can do is you can install solar panels. Yes, we know that solar panels may be expensive initially. Whenever you're trying to install a new machine initially. It is going to be expensive, right? But then think about that. In the long run, you don't have to pay uh, electricity bills monthly. So in that way, it's going to reduce a lot. Yes, initially, you have to pay a lot to get, um, uh, you know, uh, to buy the solar panel machines. But then uh, monthly, you will not be paying any electricity bill. And your bill will, I mean, your expenditure will be reduced. Think about an electric car, Tesla right? Uh, yes, Teslas are expensive. Uh, it may be $60,000, $70,000, but then, but then you don't have any fuel cost. No fuel cost because it runs uh, in electricity, right? So there we go. So you will have a lot of financial advantage when you're an ethical business, uh, when you're a socially responsible business. Initially, with, with what happens with environmental friendly businesses, an ethical business is that initially the cost can be high, but then later on, slowly, slowly, it'll be reduced. Okay, for example, we've talked about solar panels. We've talked about solar panels. We've talked about electric cars. Initially, the cost of machine is quite high, is expensive, but then you do, you do not have to pay any electricity bill if you install solar panel. You do not have to fool your car every day or every week when you buy an electric car like Tesla. Uh, there are other el electric cars available, but Tesla is, is the model, is a role model. Right, um, but what are the drawbacks of environmental-friendly business? There, there are possible disadvantages, and we are going to have a look at it, okay? Now, there are people who does not care about organic products, who does not care about animal testing. They want a low-cost product. Okay, um, uh, so so that's what they want, uh, uh, and and you know, uh, uh, maintaining an ethical business or being an ethical business is quite expensive. So there are customers um, who are just just um, uh, you know concerned uh, in buying low cost product. That's it, and and uh, you know your profits may also be reduced because. If you want to be an ethical business, you have to spend a lot initially. So your profits may come down. So uh, at first, there are two disadvantages. There are customers who does not. There are a lot of customers, actually, 80%, 80 percent of the customers worldwide, you can say, who does not care about the world, who does not care about organic products, who does not care about animal testing. They only care about buying uh, a very good product or a good product in an affordable cost. But when you're an ethical business, um, things will be expensive. Secondly, your profits will be reduced because being an ethical business is expensive, right? Um, number three, um, you know, in countries like Bangladesh, India, or Myanmar, or African countries, uh, the laws are um, the laws are very flexible. The regulations is quite weak, so you can break the law. So, so there is no need 
to be an ethical business. You can employ child labor in developing economies, in the third world economies, uh, right? Um, and, and you can do all kinds of stuff. So why be an ethical business and increase your cost? And there has been, trust me, there has been companies, big, big companies, um, I won't take their name, uh, who was, um, uh, uh, you know, fined heavily because of employing child labor in the factories, because of not taking the right steps. And, and you can break laws easily in, in, um, in, 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 the, in developing nations. Um, so that is why, you know, companies think, okay, we can break the laws easily. So why take the pain? Why increase our expenses and be an ethical business? Okay. Um, so, and this is true. I completely agree with this. In developing economies, especially, uh, uh, you know, in a country like Bangladesh, we're just developing. So we cannot think about ethical businesses. Sometimes we do have to think more than protecting the environment. Okay, because we are a developing economy and we need to provide jobs. Uh, we need to be economically sound because our population is great. Um, it's a very high and we need to provide jobs to all those people, right? So, um, you know, that's why government is building a nuclear plant. Government is building, you know, oil refinery and chemical industries. And that may impact the environment in a negative way. I am aware of it, but then in a country like Bangladesh, where we need to constantly provide jobs and create economic stability, this is quite important. Okay, if you if you think about any economies like America, UK, or Australia, they all had these factories, you know, 100, 200 years back. Later on, now they don't have it because they have, you know, graduated to uh, focusing on tertiary industry, right? Uh, so think about that. So there are four drawbacks. There are customers who are not, uh, who does not care about uh, organic products or animal testing. They just want good products at cheap costs, at affordable cost. Uh, second, your profits will be reduced because initially there are a lot of expenses if you want to be an ethical business. Number three, uh, legal laws are quite weak in developing nations. So why take the pain to be an ethical company, right? Um, and um, uh, number four, uh, uh, you know, in developing e economies, you have to concentrate um, on, on, on creating jobs and other economic factors rather than just protecting the environment. Um, let's talk about environmental audits, which is quite in interesting. Now, let's say if you have if you have accounts, we can measure accounts. We can look at accounts. Uh, we can see how much profit you've made, how much losses you've made, uh, what, what is your gross profit margin. We can see all those. But the problem, but the problem with environmental audit is environmental audit is to check how much how much sustainable you are as a business to see your pollu pollution levels. Um, to see your wastage levels as a business, are you environmental friendly or not? But what happens with environmental audit? The biggest problem is how can you measure which business is polluting how much? What is the wastage level? It's very difficult to um, to calculate. What are the recycling rates? Uh, what are the energy use? Okay, uh, at present. Uh, it is entirely voluntary. If you want to be an ethical business, you can be, but there are not, no compulsory laws. I know big brands like uh, big companies like Samsung, Apple, Google, they're all trying to be environmental friendly. Um, I've read a book about Apple and, and they've claimed that uh, they are almost 100 percent, you know, they they um, 100 percent ethical business or they recycle the products, um, you know, totally. Um, and, 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 you know, big companies can do that. Big companies can afford to be an ethical business because as I told you, if you want to be an ethical business, it's quite expensive. So big companies like Apple, Google, or, or let's say Microsoft can do it, but think about a, a small IT company or a small company like us. It is not possible. So there are, there are some limitations, right? Um, but if you are ethical business, if you if you think about the environment, if you're socially aware, you will have a good record. You will have a good reputation. 
You can use that as a marketing tool, advertise it. And, um, uh, you know, uh, there are a, a set number of audience who are attracted to these kind of businesses. But, but it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. It's still voluntary. Uh, you, you can do voluntarily. But the awareness is increasing day by day. Okay, like if I talk about myself as a customer, I was not so aware. But nowadays, especially when I buy clothes, I make sure that it's fair trade. Fair trade means people are paid the right amount of money when uh, the clothes were made or there's no child labor involved. All these things matters to me. I know a friend who really cares about, you know, organic products and not eating, uh, you know, animals. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, so that is environmental audit. Uh, right, but but the difficult, the most difficult point that I would again like to repeat is how do you check check pollution levels? How do you check recycling rates? How do you see energy use? There is no system of calculating it. That's the biggest problem. Okay, and there are very few firms that publish results of environmental audits, and Apple is one of them, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and you will get a lot of media coverage, positive media coverage free publicity and that's good okay um it could help bring the workers together you will get better applicants better people applying for the job people who are uh, very socially aware okay so think about that right so um social audit can include health and safety record to see how many number of accidents you have in the workplace? This is a very big issue. In Bangladesh, we don't think about it. The accidents in, in, in workplace can cause a lot of damage in the Western countries where companies can be fined. So, uh, so you want to be you want to be safe. So social audit consists of they will look at health and safety record, how safe you are um, as an environment for your employees to work. Is it safe enough or not? Right, uh, especially if you have a let, let's say electronic factory, chemical factory, or oil refinery, where where it's dangerous to work with uh, liquids and chemicals. Secondly, they will check how have you contributed to the local community. Are you taking care of the local community or not? As a business nowadays, it is responsible. For example, let's say FES is based in Bonani, so uh, so you know as an extra work, um, I can teach. Um, uh, let's say poor kids uh, around that area. So that is a contribution to local community or, 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 or do some kind of charity, okay? They will also check proportion of supplies that come from ethical sources. For example, this is quite important, guys. For example, let's say I buy this phone, okay? Now I'm buying this phone. I haven't committed a mistake. Um, I've paid my, I've paid my, uh, using my own money, and I've bought this phone. But what if, what if I'm just saying a, an example? What if the screen was made by a child or assembled by a child who's just ten years old, who could not go to school, or who was tor tortured in the workplace? So. In that sense, you need to think about your suppliers. Are they also adopting um, an environmental friendly approach or not? As a business, you are environmental friendly, but but are your suppliers environmental friendly or not? Check check that with with all your suppliers, right? So you may be an ethical business, but are your suppliers an ethical business? Uh, that's the bigger question. Uh, the camera may have, may have been made by an employee who was not paid on time or who is not paid at all. So when you buy this product, you are also at fault because you're encouraging the business to do, to do those kind of activities again, right? So you have to check your supplies uh, if they come from an ethical source or not. Then employee benefit schemes. Do you... Uh, do you take care, take care of them? Do you give them bonuses um, and other benefits? Um, and and um, uh, they will check the feedback from customers, from suppliers, how you are. So a social audit will contain these things. They will check health and safety record, uh, let's say uh, accidents and fatality rate in the workplace. Is your workplace safe enough to work, especially for the employees? How have you contributed to the local community? Okay. Third, are your supplies from ethical sources or not? How do you uh, help your employees 
other than paying salary? What are the benefit schemes that you've designed for them? And they will take feedback from customers because they use your product and, and they will take feedback from suppliers as well because they work with you. So evaluation, it is not compulsory at all. It's a general agreement. If you want to do it, you can do it. And, and a lot of bi big businesses have set an example like Apple, Microsoft and other businesses are becoming, um, you know, uh, very environmental friendly. Uh, so it is not compulsory, but if you want to do it, do it. But big businesses can do it because they have a lot of money, but small and medium-sized businesses will definitely have problem. Okay. Um, some companies have used this as a publicity stunt or smoke screen that, you know, it was not a true attention, but let's say they donated $1 million or they did something just to get some media attention, just to get some photographs taken, and just to put it on the newspaper. It was not the true intention. It, 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 and I know companies, very big companies, who don't care about the environment, but they just do it to get some, uh, you know, to get some publicity and to get some, uh, you know, uh, a kind of, it acts like an advertisement. Oh, this business is an ethical business and they care about poor children. They care about this. They care about that, right? And uh, last of all, and which is very important, being an ethical business is very time consuming and very expensive. As I told you, if you don't want to be in, if you don't want to use electricity, you need to buy solar panels. And buying solar panels in, panels initially can be very time consuming, right? It can be very expensive. So think about that. So three problems, uh, uh, three evaluations. It is not compulsory, but if you want to do it, you can do it. There are big businesses doing it, and they have set an example. Second, uh, you know, their companies have been accused of using it as a publicity stunt. It didn't come from inside. They just did it uh, for publicity, for advertisement. Number three, it's very expensive. It's very time consuming. That's why um, that's why not all the businesses can take this approach, right? Next up, next topic. Uh, we have a few slides left. If you have any questions, do not hesitate um, to comment down on the comment section and we'll take your question. So you can say PETA. Now let's talk about PETA. What is PETA or PETA, uh, the way, uh, whatever way you pronounce it? PETA is people for the ethical treatment of animals. Now they care about animals, or uh, they take care of animals, and 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 their cause is to fight for animals and make sure that they're ethically treated. Okay, so they care for animals and endangered species. And they protect them from the abuse because we know animals have been abused a lot. Um, uh, uh, they are used and they're slaughtered to to eat, and and the skins are used to make expensive leather bags, phone covers, and shoes and belts. Right, so PETA works for that. Right, and and you know big brands like Gucci, Chanel, Prada, uh, they all have been accused by PETA. You can go online, you can go on YouTube and see. And this kind of group, this kind of group who has one social concern is called pressure groups. This group care for animals and endangered species. There can be this other group who can who cares for, let's say, children. Uh, there can be this other group who can work for um, abuse against drugs. So pressure groups are a group uh, who will focus on one social or ethical concern. In this case, PETA focuses on ethical treatment of animals, the care uh, for animals and, and endangered species, and protect them from abuse. Okay, So they are pressure groups. And pressure group, groups can have a lot of impact on the society. Okay? For example, this is, um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is an Hermes bag made from crocodile. And, and uh, PETA uh, went against that, that, you know, you can't kill, kill crocodile to make expensive um, uh, handbags or leather bags for the rich people, right? Um, they have raised their voice against that. Um, and, and big brands like, like luxurious brands, they have crocodile farms. They raise and uh, crocodile, um, and, and they kill crocodile for skins, uh, right? And, and PETA has always 
they always went against them. Uh, there are some of some some advertisements of PETA and quite interesting. I'm not an it. Animal testing breaks heart. Okay. Uh, won't be a woolly bunny. You cannot cut wool from a sheep. I'm not a nugget. Go vegan. And, and there's a picture of a chicken. Uh, let them free. Uh, whales, dolphins. Uh, chains are for bikes, not dogs. Don't chain your dog. So, so they they uh, you know they transport their messages in this way, right? And 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 they, they just focus on caring for animals. They will not work for multi. Uh, uh, they don't have uh, more than one objective. They have they have just one objective, which is caring for animals uh, so that they're not abused, right? So the, these are some of the advertisement that you see here interesting and this is how to do it other examples of pressure groups um they, they can be a group that promotes abuse against drugs because i know there are a lot of people out there youngsters uh, who are currently uh under drugs they can be they can be a group who can who who can constantly promote of no more cutting of trees and i know such groups right because um when you cut cut trees um our climate will be affected right it's not good for the environment so there is a pressure group who will just focus on this there can be a pressure group who can promote stop who can promote stop dumping plastics into the ocean and seas because that is causing a lot of aquatic animals uh you know fishes to die right uh, there can be a group who can constantly promote uh to stop child labor and i know such group uh, one of my friend runs it and and i hate child labor i'm 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 against child labor right um so so there you go that is a pressure group working on one objective at a time um uh, 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 so uh yeah if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to question. Um, put your comments down here. We're almost done. We're doing good. 27 minutes. Now, pressure groups are a collection of individuals. They There will be members. There can be 30 of them. There can be 40 of them. There can be 100, 200, 300. And they have a set of values. In case of PETA, their value is to care for animals and abuse against animals. Okay, uh, and it's based on ethnicity, religion. It can be political philosophy. It can be uh, put a specific value. There can be a pressure group who can, um, you know, promote, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, promote tor tortures against child labor. So there you go. And they have a common goal. They have a common goal. Um, and there is a group. It's mentioned in the book. Uh, where you have mothers against drunk driving. So there are mothers who are constantly there uh, and, and, and driving while they're drunk. So there's a group who constantly protects that, right? Who are constantly against it. So they're a collection of individuals, people. Uh, it can be, uh, and it's, it's like a member format, uh, right? Uh, there can be 40, 50, 100, and thousands of them. PETA is a very big organization, and they have a set of values, right? It can also be based on ethnicity, religion, political philosophy. So there you go. And they will take action, promote change, and, and take goals. They're very influential. Sometimes they have a lot of powerful people in their group, powerful members like advocates, lawyers, solicitors, politicians, very big businessmen, business people, uh, actors, right? And, and uh, uh, you know, pressure groups, let's say they're dissatisfied with the current situation and they will represent alternative viewpoint. Let's say they're not happy with the current government or they're not happy with a certain specific agenda and they will work for that. They will work against that, right? Um, so there you go. Like, for example, you have tobacco control movement. So, um, and and uh, there there is a pressure group which will constantly work against, um, uh, you know, uh, tobacco because tobacco is not good for health, okay? So they have a set of beliefs, they have a set of values, and they will influence the change, okay? They will influence the political parties. They will influence the government, okay? But they're different from political parties. They're not a political party. Political party in our... Um, community or in our economic system, they're elected by the public. 
Uh, here, pressure groups are not elected by the public, but they influence the political party or the government to change. Okay, uh, they focus on very specialized issues. They will not focus on a wide range of issues. They will just focus on one issue, like PETA, which works abuse against animals, right? Uh, so think about them. They're not a political party, though they can have people uh, from the political world. They can have powerful people, but they're not a political party, um, okay? Uh, they will influence political pa parties and they will try to change the agenda that they don't like, okay? For example, let's say I don't like child labor, so I can form a pressure group, or let's say I join a pressure group and I will constantly try to influence the political party to create a law that protects children of our community. And pressure groups are very influential and very important to the business community, community right? Um, how do they operate? They will... As I said, they will influence the government to change something or to pass the law, okay? They will influence the business to change policies. As a business, for example, let's say if Hermes is, you, is constantly killing, just an example, if a brand is killing crocodiles to make leather handbags, a pressure group will constantly, like PETA, they will constantly um, uh, you know, influence and pressure and put a pressure on um, on that brand to change the policy and make sure not make not use crocodile skin, right? Uh, they will also force the consumers to change. Now, okay, uh, this brand makes crocodile bags, but I will not buy it. If I don't buy it, they will fail. They will not make the product anymore. So it's not just up to the business or government. As a consumer, it is said that you have to be aware as well. Don't buy the product. If this t-shirt is made by a five-year-old um, uh, girl, don't buy it, right? So in that way, you can force the businesses to change. Um, so there we go. And uh, they will seek a lot of publicity through media coverage, okay? Advertisement um, um, and, and press conferences, press releases, they will talk about it. They will do a campaign which catches the public eye. And I told you um, that, that, that they're very powerful. Uh, they will have influential people in the group, uh, right? And they will also influence consumer behavior because they will do a lot of advertisement. I showed you, right? They will do this kind of advertisement, video advertisement, advertisement, social media to, to change consumer behavior to make them more aware. Like I wasn't aware of all these things, but PETA, uh, because it's such a big organization, um, uh, PETA's advertisement and on YouTube and other places really forced me to think in a certain way, right? Um, so uh, yeah, uh, there we go. Um, and lobbying to the government, lobbying to the government means they will put their arguments forward, they will influence the government, put a pressure and, and change their, uh, change, try to change their laws and behavior and perception, right? Um, there we go. We are almost done, uh, almost done as in we are finished. And especially we are done with the chapter. This chapter was quite big. Now, for pressure groups in the book, we don't have uh, much written about pressure groups. I've taken this from outside. And, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you haven't liked our page, just type in Firus Education Services and like our Facebook page. You can also go to our YouTube channel, type in Firus Education Services and subscribe to the channel. We're done with the class. I will see you soon again. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.